In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to set up an infinite scrolling interaction for your single post template. This interaction is quite popular with content heavy websites like magazines, news and blogs because it offers a seamless user experience between posts, thus increasing views and time spent on the website. It should however be noted that it can also bring some UX drawbacks. Like any infinite scrolling experience, it can make the footer and any other elements at the bottom almost impossible to reach. There's also the fact that users have no direct control in whether to load the next post or not. But I'll show you a potential workaround to get the best of both worlds. Here's how it works. As we scroll towards the bottom of the page, you'll notice that once we reach a certain distance from the bottom of the page, the next post automatically fades in, which is really slick. And the link in the browser's URL bar gets updated corresponding to the link for the new post. This makes it possible for users to still share the current post in view. If we keep scrolling until the last post, we finally get an end of content message and no more posts are loaded. Now I'm sure you can't wait to get into it. First of all, you must set up your single post template. The most important thing is to wrap everything with an article element. You can do that in bricks by placing everything in a div or block element and changing the HTML tag to article. It's also good semantics. Now in this article element, I'll add two attributes. First, I'll add data post ID with the bricks post ID dynamic tag. Then I'll add data permalink, which will hold the bricks post URL dynamic tag. These attributes will help us maintain the context of each unique post that gets loaded. Next, we'll copy and paste the PHP code into your preferred code snippet manager. You can find the code in the accompanying blog post, which I have linked in the description. What this code basically does is to create a custom REST API endpoint that retrieves and renders the content permalink and ID for the next post. It then uses that information to lay out the next post using a bricks template which we've specified. Speaking of the Bricks template, the only thing you need to update in this code is this line here. Make sure to change the template ID to the ID of your single post template, which you can find in the Bricks template manager. In my case, it's 81. Now, back in our single post template, I'll add a code element. Be sure to place it at the bottom of the article element. Do not place it outside or it won't work. Paste the HTML and CSS for the loading spinner. You can style it however you want. Also paste the CSS for the fading animation that will play out when the new articles are loaded. Finally, we'll paste the JavaScript. This code is responsible for the infinite scrolling interaction by dynamically loading and appending the next article when the user is about 300 pixels from the bottom of the page. It also updates the browser's URL based on the visible article and displays the end of content message when there are no more articles to load. I've also included some settings so you can control the most important behaviors. The scroll threshold lets you set the distance in pixels from the bottom of the page beyond which we can trigger the loader. The URL update buffer lets you adjust the distance of the current article from the top of the viewport for the link in the URL bar to change. Finally, Cache Ajax determines whether the browser should use its cached version of the Ajax request or fetch a fresh uncached version every time. If set to true, caching is allowed, 
meaning the browser can reuse previously fetched data to improve performance. This setting also allows us to walk around a problem where changes we make to the template do not immediately reflect in subsequent articles. So if, for example, I change the position of the social sharing block to just above the article, and preview. You can see that the change reflects on the first post, but not in subsequent posts. To fix this, I recommend setting cache Ajax to false while you are still in development. It will force a fresh uncached version every time, at the cost of performance of course. Remember to set it back to true, then empty cache and hard reload or press Ctrl or Command F5 on your keyboard to avoid still content. A known issue with this setup is that the default social sharing element in Bricks only works in the first post. For subsequent posts, it loses the context and will share the Ajax request link instead of the current article, as demonstrated when I click on the WhatsApp share icon. So, in order to work around this problem, we have to create our own share buttons and build the share links manually for each social platform. You just need to replace the URL part of the social share link with the Bricks post URL dynamic tag. I have some of the most common ones listed in the accompanying blog post, which of course I've linked in the description. You can also copy and paste the JSON for a share card I already made for Bricks. This should give you a good starting point. Just be sure to replace the social icons with your own since those might not carry over. So far, we should have it working perfectly with no further trouble, which is all well and good. One of the main UX drawbacks of this interaction is the fact that users do not have direct control over the interaction. It just loads more articles as they scroll towards the bottom. This can be frustrating if the user wants to access content in the footer. So what if we could add a load more button that the user can click to load the next post at will? Or even better, what if we could make the load more button appear only after a set number of articles have been loaded? This way, we can get the best of both worlds, automatic loading and user control. So I'll add a load more button at the bottom of the article. Remember to set the semantic tag to button, otherwise it may not work. then copy the button's ID or set your own ID. If you have bricks set to add element ID as needed, you might need to set your own ID for the button under the CSS styles. Next, I'll paste a new version of the JavaScript. This is a more robust version of the code, which you can get by purchasing on my template store. I have it linked in the description. When you purchase, you support this channel and encourage more useful tutorials like this one. You'll immediately notice that we have a few extra settings here. Load button ID allows us to impute the ID of our load more button. This is how the code recognizes the button on the page. So users can click to load the next article via Ajax. If you decide to work without a load more button, the script will automatically load new articles when the user scrolls beyond the scroll threshold as usual. Posts per batch allows us to set the number of posts to automatically load by scroll before the button appears. So if we set it to three, the next three articles will automatically load when the user hits the scroll threshold. But on the third article, the load more button appears and the Ajax loading is suspended. 
until the user clicks on the button to load the next batch of articles. I haven't seen this kind of implementation anywhere else, but I think it's a good solution in this case. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't already, check out my multi-level header menu template for Bricks Builder. It's designed to provide a robust starting point in creating a simple yet powerful header menu relatively quickly. The template also includes a CSS style sheet where I've curated all the most important styling options in one place so you don't have to go hunting around the Bricks user interface to have a header menu that looks and feels exactly how you would want. My favorite feature by far is that it offers a true multi-level experience on mobile, making content easily accessible without overwhelming your users. Plus, you can replace the boring old toggle icon with something more delightful. You can purchase the multi-level header template at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.